Hello, nerdlings. What's up, nerdlings? So, uh, do you nerd for conventions? I totally nerd for conventions. Like right there. Like right my, there. my smoochy <laughs> stamp that let me get back in and out of the RubleCon. So yeah, we just got back from RubleCon. And another that, year, another one done. That is a uh, local convention in our area. And I believe that it started out mostly as like a Hot Wheel toy show. And it's kind of evolved yeah. into just an all-encompassing toy show. A lot of ref or, uh, retro toys, mm -hmm. you know, vintage stuff. But then a lot of newer stuff. So if you're looking for some good stuff that you maybe missed, uh, Funko Pops are all over the place Funko there now, Pops, of course. Yeah, lots of Funko Pops, lots of toys, vintage, lots of vintage toys. Uh, we we didn't pick it up, but we saw the Steve Urkel board game. Yeah, we did. True story. <laughs> um, I did not need to learn to do the Urkel. <laughs> <laughs> now, this year... I feel like more than uh, what we've seen in the past this year, they had a ton they really of did. comics. <laughs> Fortunately, we had this to wheel around, and it came in very handy. Yes, because we've done many of these like garage sale esque trade show things before that um, we've taken my shopping bags to, which come in great handy, but uh, I saw a bunch of people wheeling those around one year, and I was like, uh-uh, nope, I gotta get one of those. And then when I went online to look for one, I found the wine barrel, and I was like, light bulb, I can totally turn that into the DK barrel. So I did, I bought it and I bought a DK sticker and made it into the DK barrel. So a lot of people at RubleCon loved it. A guy even asked if he could get a picture yeah. of it. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people thought it was ingenious and it came in very handy it did. because I think this woman got like 25 pounds of comic books. I did. In fact, I did. future Tom, you know what to do. <laughs> so since uh, comic books were all over the place and we've both really been into them a lot lately, yes. that was actually our biggest pickup. Uh -huh. And we're not going to show you absolutely everything that we got. There was way too many. Yeah, we just wanted, we picked out a few titles that we kind of wanted to, you know, throw up on screen to let you see the cover real quick and maybe say a little something about it. But at the end, we'll try to put some pictures in that show uh, most uh, of, yeah. if not all, of what we picked up just real quick. Uh, one thing that I wanted to show real quick is for only $5, I got a trade paperback of Army of Darkness, Ashes to Ashes. Now, when I started collecting the Army of Darkness comics, I had no idea there, there were so, so many. many. Yes. So at first it was fun. It's like, oh yeah, there's probably like 10 or 15 of them. Oh no. But yeah, there's... Yeah, like 10 or 15 different storylines. Yeah, because there's so <laughs> many different storylines. Trade paperbacks are awesome because they take those storylines, compress it all into one. And at five bucks, it's like sweet. Plus, I don't, I don't know that we actually paid five dollars because a lot of the people were willing to yeah. bundle. And honestly, I, I have to say, you know, I was a very much a comic book novice, not character novice, but book novice. And I didn't know that they did trade paperbacks until we got together and he showed them to me. And I have been all over those things because I love the fact that I don't have to go and search down the the stories and everything. So, do we want to do? More comics or tell you what, I'll show you I'll show you guys some of the comics I picked up and then we'll change it up a Yeah, we'll change up because obviously I got toys, you know me. So the uh, green <laughs> tag was for a dollar and obviously we bundled so we probably got uh -huh. it for less. This one is the talisman. This is actually based off the Stephen King novel that he did with I believe Peter Straub. And I love the book, The Talisman. If King wrote more books like this, I would be a bigger King fan. But uh, the fact that it had a comic book version, I was very interested in checking that out. And I got a, a weird thing here. What is this? The Adventures of Jinky Coronado, Coronada Bonsai Girl. She's like um, Thelma's little sister. Jinkies! <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. But uh, I yeah, I love the the cover of it where she's normal but looking in the mirror. And, in all of her different costumes yes. and everything. And that's actually what sold me. It seemed very, you know, kind of tongue in cheek anime with the humor already on the cover. Here's an insight into Lady Lacey's brain. This is what I see when I look in the mirror. Lots of different costumes. <laughs> but I'm wearing normal clothes. <laughs> this one I picked up on a whim. It is called uh Marvel Weird World. And even though one of the figures looks very mannish, every time I looked at this cover, it yeah. looked like Link and Zelda. The looks Zelda like a looks manly Zelda. Yeah, 
but uh, I wanted to open it up and see if that were the case. Like maybe it's a reference to Legend of Zelda or not. Who knows? But comics have so <laughs> many variant covers nowadays. It's like I'll I'll give it a shot because this was uh, I think this was a two dollar one, but again in a bundle. Yeah. And going with the Army of Darkness, I got one of the Danger Girl crossovers, and the Danger Girls are always dressed scantily and always in the most provocative poses, so pairing them up with Ash is, is just perfect. <laughs> and one more at least for Army of Darkness. I just loved the cover of this with Ash and his fair maiden, and he's punching and pushing away skeletons to keep her safe. So I thought that was kind of fun. Hasn't quite driven her crazy yet. Not yet. <laughs> so that was just a few of the comics I wanted to show you guys. Just a few. What's something that you picked up? Well, as you can see, I'm wearing a Deadpool shirt. And so one of the Hot Wheels booths that we had walked by, the guy obviously is very good at marketing because he holds this up and he goes, hey, hey. So he held up a uh, Deadpool in his chimichanga van. <laughs> and it's actually really cool because there's a little teeny tiny Deadpool in there. <laughs> That is pretty so, great. Yeah, that is, uh, I was like, hey, <laughs> you know, I am a Deadpool fan, so good marketing. So <laughs> so nicely done. Nicely, nicely done, yes. And then I also, when I was a little girl, the only way I'd ever seen the Christmas Carol uh, storyline was the Disney's version. And so I absolutely love that. I used to watch it every year. And um, Jacob Marley, goofy as Jacob Marley, he was always my favorite <laughs> in there because I just love that he's got like a little piggy bank. Uh, attached to him, but I just thought, saw this in one of the bins, and I was like, oh my gosh, it's from one of my favorites, so I just loved it. And I love that they made him all blue like a ghost. Yes. <laughs> so I just, I'll stop wiggling him around. Like, he just won't. Wait and he change. does not want to sit on that. <laughs> but anyway, and he's he's even got, you know, the little bandage what, around his Yeah, when you tie that around your head, that insinuates you're sick. Of course. You know. <laughs> that's, that's what I do whenever I'm sick. That way people know. Yeah. So yeah, I, I love that. I thought that was great. So... Yahoo-hoo! There's my, there's my goofy. <laughs> anyway, and then I got two more toys here. Um, these are obviously loose. I got Storm. I got the the I guess TV show version of her, and I don't know what version she wore. Yeah, I mean, it's I'm literally not... the exact same outfit, but it's all black. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely Oops. the same figures. Even the molded hair. Yeah, I mean, everything. everything's the same. This one's obviously missing her like cape and everything but yeah so i don't know <laughs> i just i thought they were cool i loved her her boots she's got these like thigh high high heel boots going on but yeah so uh i love me some storm she likes storm but one thing she never really cared for of storm was in the 90s cartoon whenever she would try to use oh her powers gosh, yes when she would be all like you know put her arms up in the air and she'd be like Winds of change, help me with my plight, and blah, 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 blah. It's like, know, can't you just go, with your like, lightning? Cyclops doesn't do that, no. you know? <laughs> Eyes with object beams, assist me, bless the sky. Yeah. So, I love Storm, but yeah, seriously. Now, I believe that this is it of your toy pickup, wasn't no, it? No, I got one more toy thing. Oh. I got one more big toy thing. We can save that for, for after you show some things off if you want to, though. I, I was getting at. I was surprised she did not pick up more toys. That is true. I didn't pick up more toys, but this was the last toy thing I got. I got me some Farscape action. Here. Nice. Yes, and it's got it's got John Crichton, Chiana, Dargo, and. I, did, I forgot what her name was. Zara? Zara. Zahn? Zahn, that's right. <laughs> I was like, what was her name? Now, it doesn't have... It doesn't have Aaron Soon, which I was actually really disappointed at because it's like you literally have almost the entire cast here minus um, Rigel and then Aaron mm -hmm. Soon. And it's like, why would you not go ahead and put them all in there? But they are really highly detailed and, of course, they're not going to stay in the box. You know, everyone knows that. But, <laughs> so we'll have uh, to take a closer yeah, upper look at I will at get some closer upper pictures of this. But yeah, I was so excited when I found this, and it was for this one was for a really great price and great condition and everything. So that was that was yeah, surprisingly for me, <laughs> this was the only toys I got this time. But I think it's because I went a little nuts on the comics. Yeah, a little, <laughs> lot of nuts on the comics. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so this was actually kind of a nice 
varied pickup for you. Yeah, little it was. Disney, little sci-fi, yeah, X-Men, X-Men, Marvel. Additional Marvel. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, this is very cool. I, I thought this was very cool. Yeah. Let us know if you guys are Farscape fans, if you ever checked out the show. And uh, if you haven't, maybe give it a watch. Yeah, it's, it's very, a very different. F- different, very fun sci-fi show. So, yeah. A lot of cool stuff. Let's see what else you picked up. Well, they didn't have a whole lot of games, and I didn't expect them to. Rubicon usually focuses more Mm -hmm. on toys, and of course that's your comics. But uh, I did find a couple of Atari games. I got Kung Fu Master, and it looks like Crossbow. And uh, they're actually in pretty decent condition, you know, considering they're Atari (laughs) games. But the labels look nice. And uh, aside from those, I also got... Whoa. This this probably isn't going to work out too well anyway. Got a bunch of Game Gear games. Um, all of the handheld games I got for $2 each. So, Adventures, you want your $2? Adventures of <laughs> Batman and Robin. We got OutRun. G-Lock Air Battle. See how long G-Lock. I can go. Uh, Star Trek Generations Beyond the Nexus. That's got Picard and Kirk on it. We got Sonic. It was a Sonic Chaos. And then we got a couple in cases like Indiana Jones, and this is the Last Crusade. Ooh. Oh, sorry, I scratched you. And then for Game Boy, Uh-oh. Super Return of the Jedi, and it's got that little logo for the Game Boy player. Woohoo! Oh, look at you! There you we go. Did. Oh, no. So not very many games, but. Uh, this some is more nice, than what we normally find here, yes. so this is pretty awesome. And some nice cheap handheld games is always fun. Of we course, actually did come across a, some old school a guy in a booth that uh, didn't think he was going to have as much space as he did, and he said, so I didn't bring any of my video games to sell. And we were so disappointed. We were like, you had video games yeah. to sell? And he was thinking ahead he even brought his Switch because he, uh, he wanted to get some Octopath Traveler time in, just in case he wasn't that busy. Yeah, so... so that's our... Our video game haul Which was pretty from good Rubicon. Rubicon. All right, now we're in trouble. Yeah, let's, let me show you what I picked up. So, there we go. But before you start freaking out, a lot of these are paper, trade paperbacks. I had to so. roll that around, guys. Twenty-five <laughs> yeah. pounds. I'm serious. So, um, I just wanted to show off a couple of my favorite um, uh, titles that I picked up in just the single comics. Of course, I love my Gwenpool. And I already have this issue, but it's a variant cover, and I like the you know the toy look of it and everything. So there's that one, and then of course I'm love uh, my Gwen Spider Gwen, and I'm kind of getting into her right now. And this was an Edge of the Spider Verse uh, Spider Woman's. So there's Spider Woman, <laughs> Silk, and uh, Spider Gwen in there. They go off on their own little adventure. So I thought I'd I'd give that a check out. So I thought that would be a lot of fun. And then you know how obsessed I've been with my my Grimm's fairy tales just, lately. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. So I picked up this one. It's um part six of six that I have been trying to find. <laughs> but the reason that this one caught my eye, aside from the fact that I actually am trying to read the Unleashed storyline, is that I thought she looked a lot like Emma Frost Very on much. this cover. So that'll be that'll be really interesting. And then I got a bunch of trade paperbacks. These are all trade paperbacks, and I didn't even get all the ones that they had because I started to run out of money. <laughs> now, the nice thing is a lot of them were marked at $5, yes, but she got I an did. awesome, very awesome bundle deal because uh, the guy saw that you know she was going for so many of them. And this one caught Sir Tom's eye because it looks like the chick from Portal on the front of it. Doesn't it? I mean, that's freaking Shell right there. Yeah. I mean, that's she's dressed. If if it's not Shell, she's dressed as Shell, yeah. obviously for Halloween or something. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like I said, I've I've been trying to collect. I had issue zero and issue one of the six um, unleashed, so I was super excited to find it in a trade paperback. So I was able to read the whole thing. So that's awesome. So I got that one. Now, real quick, comic book fans, do you guys like getting the trade paperbacks so you can get the full story kind of in one go? Mm-hmm. Or do you still prefer just getting uh, the separate issues? Or do you do both and get the trade paperback so you can read it and then get the the issues so that you can have them nice just in case they're worth something someday? That's kind of where I'm going. But anyway, I thought this one was kind of fun. Bad Girls of, of uh, yeah, of, uh, we need to keep this PG here. But And then him and I both absolutely love um, some uh, Peter Pan. Peter Pan board. And so here is Grimm's going to Neverland, and I think I haven't read this this storyline, but I 
I'm guessing that's Tinkerbell. She looks really cool. Then on the back, it looks like... Tiger Lily. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And then, yeah, I got a whole bunch of, of other just trades, like, <laughs> galore. The nice thing is that some of them are um, individual storylines, and then some of them are just volumes one through whatever, where it's like they've just collected the ones that aren't in storylines where it's just which is very neat yeah but so you can see here i got a ton of them and like he said we will we'll try to get now, better pictures of these you know just by comparison the ones that i didn't show you guys that's that's all he i got did, so. <laughs> it's kind of a different hey these are trade paperbacks though they're a little thicker <laughs> but anyway so yeah now something kind of neat at this year's rubicon Oops. was we saw a lot more artists in their yeah, booths. I don't remember there actually being artists last year. And we and lucked out, and one of the booths was actually one that we had seen at Vision Con. Yes. So we got a couple of which was very awesome cool because prints. when we were at Vision Con, we had planned to go back and get some of his prints on the last day, and he had closed up and gone home by the time we got back to his booth. So I was really upset about that, and I was like, well, I guess hopefully he'll be at Vision Con. But I didn't have to wait for Vision Con. We got it at RubelCon. Then he did a prints for ten dollars or four for thirty. So we went ahead and picked up four. Now our little one has recently become quite the Black Panther yeah. fan, so she got a very nice Black Panther print. And I love the detail this artist does. He does a lot of very realistic. You can see a lot of life and light in these, even though they're kind of dark. Now the thing is, this one's very pretty. Personally, I would have liked to have seen more Black Panther. Yeah. You know, get him in like a really cool pose or something because Black Panther, just kind of the, the helmet, the mask and everything, I don't know. It's not as cool to me because you got to get the whole suit. The yeah. whole suit's awesome. You got to get the suit, the claws. I love the concept of his whole outfit coming out of his necklace. Yes. You know? And then uh, comic book divas. Yeah. And this one, it does cut off some of, because he had each one of these individually done, but I like the montage of it. Um, it does kind of cut off some of the neat stuff that they're doing, but it's just a bunch of the girls, the superhero girls, doing things. Like, one of the ones that did get cut off, whoops, was, um, I want to, Batgirl right here. She's actually painting her toes in the bigger picture, and it cuts it off, but you can still see her with her painting. But, you know, some of the girls are doing their makeup, or they're, you know, reading things, or, you know, so it was just kind of a cute, fun, like, look what we can do kind of a thing. So, yeah, I really liked this one. Now, the print that she had actually regretted not picking up or being able to pick up at Vision Con. Which was what made me be like, all right, I'm getting them this time, was this one. This is the one that caught my eye. As you, It's old Luke, and then you've got young Luke over here. And this is the one that you can really see the amazing, and I hope the camera can pick it up. But you can really see the amazing detail. It does literally look like you can see the sunshine on his mm -hmm. face. You can see the expression, the like, and life. And, I mean, it's just incredible to me it's just totally impressive and this artist we will definitely put their information yes. in the link or the description below links to their information yeah below but he is fantastic at giving that lifelike yes. look there are so many harry potter prints that oh, he yeah. has there was various a characters one that we were just both enamored with but it was one of those things, it's like, I like Haggard, but not enough to have a print of him. But the print was just, I mean, the, the drawing was amazing. He had done a really awesome Aquaman. And so I'd asked him if he did any um, commissions. And he says he does, but he's kind of, he's backed up. And Understandably I, yeah, so. Yeah, and I told him, I said, well, I may ask you to do me a Mara one, because his Aquaman was pretty awesome. Now, before you think all of his art is uh, totally realistic, he had a little fun, and I got me a print. Oh, some <laughs> dragon's lair. Which that was something I thought was neat of him. He doesn't always do this kind of style. He did a bunch of, he did a lot of different styles. So, uh, of course, you have Princess Daphne with her hero, Dirk the Dairy. Which will go perfect in the game. And this, I, I love this picture. Yeah. I love how great it looks. Uh, he definitely captured them both very well. Dirk's smug look. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So that is great. And it was very cool to see Rubicon having some, uh, you know, artists there, mm -hmm. especially local artists, because uh, a lot of the artists that we talked to, they lived in the area. Some lived in Branson, somewhere in St. Louis, but uh, they hadn't really come too far to be here. So it's nice to be able to support your local artists. Put that one back up. I just love that one. And uh, speaking of local artists, this was kind of fun. Just a little coloring book, Silent Sillies. And we'll put their information down there below. A lot of his art was neat because every bit of his art was in the, like, 
Steamboat Willie style. He did Raiders of the Lost Ark. There was a Frozen Elsa. Um, some Star Wars some Star work. Wars characters, yeah. And he said that he's been doing art like this since about 2012, but since uh, Bendy and Cuphead came out recently, he's been getting a lot yeah. more attention. And it's like, <laughs> that's awesome because you definitely need it. Yeah. Although it's also like, come on, guys, where were you in 2012? <laughs> but yeah, anyway, so we had a lot of fun this year at RubelCon. That was and a lot of fun. As always, I look forward to next year. <laughs> but, uh, you know, hopefully they'll put it in a little bit bigger venue. It was a little squished. That was the only complaint that yeah. both of us had. It was very tight trying to get around in there. Um, it Everyone wasn't that you could fit. It was just you. There was like this much space between the aisles. So if like if you wanted to look over here, you couldn't get. No one could get past you, or you couldn't look at the aisle over here. So it was. It was just a little. It made it a little difficult. But uh, for the most part, the people that were there, mm -hmm. uh, as far as the vendors and the people there, just visiting and shopping, of course. Yeah. For the most part, everyone was being pretty nice. Oh, yeah. So it wasn't that big of a problem. I mean, as long as you used your manners, you could get to where you wanted to go to yep. uh, start thumbing through some more comic boxes and finding some good deals. And I was totally impressed with this guy over here being able to wheel a cart around and not run over <laughs> people and manage to not get through everything. Not a single toe was ran over. If you notice that uh, he wouldn't let me ro pull the cart at no. all. <laughs> because he knew I would trip or fall or something. Anyway. So, uh... All right. Well, I guess that is all that we got from RuboCon. That is not I all guess we got from RuboCon. Oh, well. We have a maybe, secret to Maybe show we'll you. have to uh, to split this video up. So Have pot D. So, you know, be careful doing that. That got us in trouble with the that Alaska. That did get us in trouble with Alaska, but we don't have as much as the Alaska. So, uh, just real quick, guys. Make sure if you like the video, give it a like. Comment down below about any of the things you like, the prints, the artist. If you've uh, ever heard of RubleCon, mm -hmm. if you live in our area, let us know about some of the comic books, maybe the games, even the Farscape characters or the show, if you're fans of any of that. Uh, I got the bell for notifications. Consider subscribing if you haven't. If you want a closer, upper look at any of this stuff, go to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and we will try to put lots of closer, upper pictures of those things. I hope so. There's a lot of stuff you got to take pictures There's of. There's a lot of things to take pictures of. <laughs> Well, a lot of trade paperbacks. <laughs> hopefully, you guys will be here for the next video because yeah. because yeah, we're not done. We got mystery bags. I can't even see anymore. I'm hiding. That's a lot of mystery That's bags. That's a lot of mysteries and secrets. <laughs> Bye, nerdlings. Bye.